Obviously, the increase in prices will, uh, if this is sustained, uh, increase investment in upstream exploration and development. Uh, but more broadly, I, I do believe we have been, to coin a phrase, mugged by reality here. Um, and, the, and the world is now seeing what Alberta has been saying for years, uh, that we must, as we, we have been blessed, as a rights-respecting liberal democracy with the third largest energy, energy reserves on the face of the earth, that can be a force for good by allowing us to displace conflict oil from Russia and other uh, dictatorships. So I, I think that this totally changes the policy context. We, we already had in Washington, we already had a situation where a majority of both the Senate and House of Representatives, for example, um, have supported uh, increased uh, production in North America. I think that is now headed to becoming a supermajority. And uh, so I, I think this completely changes the policy context. It obviously changes the price context. Um, and I, I, let me be clear, I, I don't relish this. As, as Minister Taze said at his news conference the other day, he'd rather have 60 or $70 WTI than a conflict in Ukraine, than the invasion of that peaceful country. So uh, we don't, <laughs> this is not about Alberta cynically taking advantage of this political, of, of this gross invasion and political instability. This is Alberta saying that we can be part of a long-term solution. Now, I know some people out there are saying, well, you know, uh, it takes years to get pipelines built and to get at major energy productions uh, uh, in production. And that none of that's going to stop the 40-mile-long convoy of Russian tanks headed towards Kiev right now. True. But we also have to play the long game just like Va Vladimir Putin has. Uh, Putin's invasion of Ukraine did not start a week ago. It started eight years ago in Crimea and Donbass. For eight years, he has been planning for this moment. We can certainly get what more of, much more of our energy to the rest of the world if we're determined about this in much less than eight years. If the bad guys are willing to play a long, long game using energy as their source of wealth, then maybe the good guys should too. Well, we clearly need uh, certainty around coastal gas link so that LNG Canada gets completed on time so we don't miss the boat on the next round of contracts for uh, Asian LNG imports. Uh, secondly, we in Alberta, we are working with a, as you know, consortium uh, called for the Rockies Pro, uh, LNG project uh, to see if we can be helpful. And we have raised this with the government of Canada uh, to, co to collaborate with us on uh, hopefully getting a second major West Coast LNG project uh, to come to a, a positive final investment decision. Um, and I have to have some frank words about the new policy of the government of Quebec in this regard. Uh, in 2019, 2020, uh, I and my office actually worked with a LNG project proposed for the North Shore of the St. Lawrence, Energy Saguenay, and ha actually helped to make connections that had brought uh, Berkshire Hathaway to the table for a prospective $5 billion investment in that project um, because we thought ultimately it would benefit Western Canadian producers. But in part, I think, because of the uncertainty around the uh, winter 2020 protests on Coastal Gas Link and the political uncertainty that that created, Berkshire Hathaway backed out and, and Energy Saguenay. And now the government of Quebec is saying that it will not permit any or facilitate any LNG, let alone domestic gas consumption. And Justin Trudeau uh, has effectively granted a political veto to the province of Quebec over a prospective interprovincial oil pipeline, such as a revival of the Energy East concept. So we need the federal government to assert its jurisdiction uh, over interprovincial pipelines. And, and frankly, I call on the government of Quebec to be part of the solution to uh, reducing European carbon emissions and eliminating Russia's uh, stranglehold on European energy supplies by working with us to uh, export responsibly LNG. I think, if they, I think that if private sector investors could see 
clear political and policy support that they would come back to the table uh, for a potential major uh, East Coast uh, LNG project.